Le damos la bienvenida a nuestra doctora Elena Kienaseva, distinguida profesora e investigadora de Rusia, miembro del Consejo Académico Internacional de Multiversidad Mundo Real, Edgar Morán, graduada de Física, Astronomía y Filosofía de la Universidad Pedagógica Estatal de Moscú, se ha desempeñado en varias instituciones, entre las que sobresale el Instituto de Filosofía de Rusia y especialista de reconocimiento y especialista de reconocido prestigio internacional, autora de más de 400 trabajos científicos que incluyen ocho monografías y más de 150 artículos científicos. Le damos la bienvenida con un fuerte aplauso y se encuentra ella en su casa. Dear friends, esteemed colleagues, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer to, for inviting me uh, and giving me this opportunity to participate in this great scientific event. Uh, I would like you to present my, some of my reflections on the complex thinking. Complex thinking is my uh, field of research already during um, several decades, I would say two or even three decades. And I, um, I base my uh, consideration of the complex thinking on my own research in complexity studies, first of all, and also on uh, the, um, my collaboration with uh, colleagues from other countries. Do we have translation? Okay. Um, And I, what I have done in Russia, uh, in um, propagation and understanding of the complex thinking of Edgar Morin, que he I have translated one of the main work of Edgar Morin, uh, La méthode, la nature de la nature, method, the nature mm -hmm. of nature in Russian. And Edgar Morin uh, has great interest in the Edgar Russian culture, in the development of Russian culture, and visited some, um, several times Rus uh, Russia and Moscow and presenting his uh, views, his integrative views to the Russian scientific community. What do I mean by the integrative thinking? Uh, integration, uh, it's the, uh, a kind of evolutionary holism, according to my view. We can combine different knowledge, the knowledge from uh, different scientific disciplines. The applied science and fundamental science. It is called now translational science. Academic knowledge and educational strategies and methods of education. Okay. What is con con complex thinking according to my view? We need complex thinking in order to cope with the complexity of the world. It's quite obvious that we are living in the complex world and this world is full of instability and crisis of sophic sophisticated interaction between elements and subsystems 
which give highly complicated picture of behavior on the dynamical level, uh, levels of organized whole. We can observe emergent event, and emergence is, emergence is uh, always connected with self-organization and complexity. We can observe short periods of crisis or points of instability where we can choose a way of development between the ways which is proper to the complex system. Can we speak about the fate or about destiny? Our person destiny, destiny for our countries or several regions of the world? According to my view, I presented the view of the Russian school in complexity studies. No, we have no one destiny. We have alternatives of development. The future is open. If it would be a destiny, it would be a plural destinies, for ourselves. That's why they can construct the desirable and preferable future. Uh, we have to know how we can use the complex thinking. And to use the complex thinking, we need complex epistemology. As Edgar Morin said, Epistemology complex. Uh, or I would say we um, need thinking in complexity. Thinking in complexity, it means to penetrate in complexity, but simultaneously not be distracted by it. Thinking in complexity is like dancing in the rain, which picks up the intentions and the rhythm of the rain and merging with it in one and indistinguishable nature. In this view, the subject and object of cognition form one and indivisible whole. So the complex thinking is our instrument to deal with complexity of uh, the world we live in. Some important consequences from this. The controlling or managerial influences should be no less complex in order to effectively control or manage a complex systems or organization. This truth is old as the world. Like is known by like. Like cures like in medicine. Like is controlled by like. What is complexity? Complexity is a multitude of elements, but multitude of elements is not uh, the main thing. The main thing is the complexity of relations between these elements. So the complexity, uh, the connection of two people, for example, may be more complex than a behavior of crowd of people. The connection is also of great significance to build complexity. Uh, complex systems are open systems and self-organization is connected with emergent properties. Emergence means the properties which can not be predicted by analyzing the available states of affairs in nature, society, 
or in our body or in our soul. Complex systems has a memory. And this is similar to the, our being, the human being. But memory is also uh, peculiar for natural systems, for aging, for hurricanes, for example. Also memory, memory. Uh, and there are loops of complexity, negative and positive. Negative loops was investigated in cybernetics, uh, the complexity studies, the theory of self-organization and complex um, behavior of systems, which uh, is um, developed in different country and in such a sociological and philosophical way by Edgar Morin as well. Uh, we need to understand what is possible complexity, positive, positive uh, feedback. Positive feedback give us a flourishing complexity, an explosion of complexity, and the appearance of very complicated patterns of the behavior, structures of behavior. This is the main things. But to um, understand complexity, we need somehow to reduce complexity because we cannot uh, observe the behavior of each individual in the society, of each pattern in the natural system, the each self in our body, the each thought in our mental schemes. So we need uh, to deal with complexity. We need somehow to reduce it, to have a method to uh, deal with complexity in a scientific way. And there are three different approaches how we can deal with complexity. According to Hermann Haken, we can um, reveal parameters of order of complex systems. Parameters of order are several, not too many, macroscopic parameters which determine the behavior of elements of sub or some systems. To be more understandable, I would give you an example. For um, order parameter in uh, social media is uh, national tradition, religion, uh, language. We cannot um, arbitrarily change the language. It's reality we live in. We have to use language. We have to follow the national tradition. We cannot change it. These um, uh, are uh, the order parameter for the uh, description of social systems. And according to Haken, there is a slaving principle. So the order parameter uh, determine the are created by the behavior of, of, of elements, but then they uh, slave the behavior of, of elements because the individual have to obey this order parameters. And this is one of the methods how we can reduce complexity and cope with the complexity of the world. Couldn't another view, the chemical physicist, which has a, a Russian origin, uh, he was Belgian, uh, he mm, mm, proposed to um, the model of Brusselator and the diagrams of bifurcations. Diagrams of bif bifurcations, this is um, namely the nonlinear development of complex systems. 
So we can understand that the development goes from one bifurcation. Uh, there are two ways, but it can be more than two ways. And then we have a cascades of bifurcations. And that means that the future is radically open. We can now uh, return to the same past, but only to the past which is similar to the past which we had. So if we go, for example, now in Russia to the um, pattern of power at, as it was in, in the Soviet Union, but the, uh, our mm, present communists are not the communists as they were in the, then Russia was part of the Soviet Union. This is different. We cannot return to our uh, past. This is also the way of um, how we deal with complexity. And this is the development of our Moscow School in Complexity Studies. And Sergei Kurdyumon, who was my teacher, he was an uh, applied mathematician, physicist, and applied mathematician. He proposed to um, uh, develop the theory of complexity, which is named after the um, German professor Hermann Hacking synergetics as a theory of non-stationary dissipative structure that developed in blow-up regime. What does it mean, blow-up regime? It's a, a very fast growth of complexity of the system. Avalanche-like, avalanche-like growth with, uh, with non-linear positive feedback. Uh, and um, the way how we can deal the complexity, we can to the predict the purposes of evolution, in, uh, so to say, purposes, or the long uh, distant trends of, evolu of evolution. Uh, the channels of development, so to say, structure attractors of evolution. And it was, uh, uh, it was uh, uh, not by me, but co collaborators um, near the Sergei Kurdyumov. It was investigated, they were investigated by means of mathematical modeling, computer experiments. And um, so, uh, these are the examples of structure attractor, attractors of evolution in three-dimensional space. There are some symmetry, and there are some breaks of symmetry, and there, there, uh, there is a difference between the development of odd and even structures. Break the symmetry between the old and cement structure, which is similar to the life, living, living uh, organism. Uh, what can we see else about complexity? Complexity. Um, is um, it's impossible to give a precise definition of complexity. Striving for exact definitions of general concepts is rather often, even in exact sciences. But this is a thankless deal. Complexity is multifaceted phenomenon in the universe and it is connected with a large number of interacting elements and with intricate interactions between them. Complexity is connected with hierarchical principle of system organization and the principle which was discovered already in cybernetics, the principle of necessary variety of elements. So we can 
cultivate the variety of elements, preserve the variety, the variety of elements, to uh, provide the system to develop in a stable and dynamical way, which we call sustainable development. Um, according to Edgar Morin, who argues the problem in a true philosophical context, complexity is unitus multiplex, that is unity of diversity and unity in diversity. We have to cult cultivate this diversity in our personal behavior, in financial behavior, for example, don't put all eggs in one best basket, in um, um, uh, educational also, how to, how to um, construct a most, uh, the, the better uh, class for education, to separate uh, good uh, pupils from the uh, weak one. No, it's, it uh, will weaken the system. Uh, the variety of pupils is the best one. Um, also, the, there are a certain, um, the most relevant sizes uh, of um, individual, of, of pupils in educational class. The best number is from 10 to 15. This is our investigation. Uh, the application of the complex thinking to education, to educational procedure. Um, now about the borders of complexity. Okay. Um, and the construction of complexity. This is exactly uh, some strategy which is relevant uh, of, uh, to the Russian thinking, to the thinking of uh, the uh, Russian philosophers and scientists, because a Russian, a Rus uh, Russian culture, a Russian philosophy, um, always try to combine not only rationality, but also ir ir uh, irrational behavior, not only logic, but also intuition, not only pure theory, but also application. Uh, and the, so to say, the uh, holistic perspective uh, was very important for the Russian philosophy. And another thing which is peculiar to the Russian thinkers that we cannot have only obey the regularities the laws of behavior in nature or society, but we can um, have our own initiative to construct uh, the reality, to control the time, the cause of time. And this was the strategy of thinking of the Russian cosmism. Philosophers, but also natural scientists like Tsiolkovsky, Vernadsky, Chizhevsky, starting from the Russian philosophy, Nikolai Fyodorov. We can control the uh, evolutionary uh, paths of development. And that's why an individual, a human being, can be co-creator with God. God as the nature itself because we can uh, explore another space in the universe, we can control the time, we can um, uh, combine our own nature, our own uh, attempts with uh, those which is peculiar for the nature itself. Uh, now about the boundaries of complexity, the borders of complexity. Complexity studies claims for universalism, uh, and this is uh, the challenge 
of complexity studies from the very beginning, from the development of systems thinking, cybernetics, and other uh, previous fields from which complexity um, uh, has started, uh, modern complexity studies had started its development. Um, so uh, the um, complexity pretends for a certain kind of universalism in science. But it's well known that the theory which explains all explains nothing. Any scientific theory should be humble in its claims. To understand boundaries is a tax tasks of any science or scientific conception. And the modern complexity studies are certainly not exception to this rule. Uh, if a theory explains all, it explains nothing. If a medicine will heal all, it will heal nothing. There are no panadea. There are no panadea. So, the complex thinking is no panadea. Uh, it's our own endeavor, our own uh, deal to use complexity in, a ba in complex thinking in a better way. And there are some difference between the complexity, complex thinking, and the uh, uh, natural philosophy of uh, the, in the history of uh, human thought. Uh, natural philosophy, natur philosophy, uh, starting from Aristotle, metaphysics, and then Giardun, Giardana Bruna and Tamasa Campanella, natural philosophical studies uh, in Renaissance, and then natural philosophy of uh, the German philosophers, such as Leibniz, Schelling, or Hegel builds a certain general picture of the world. As a rule, they uh, are based their thinking on a certain first principles. This is a top-down approach. And these principles are constructed in a speculative way. We can just sit, there, sit down in a chair, smoking, uh, smoking a cigarette, and will thinking what uh, what is happening in the uh, nature, what is happening in the society, just in speculative way. But the uh, complexity studies, the complex thinking we are dealing now, is not a speculative philosophy. It's not an armchair philosophy. We need to study what is happening in nature itself what is happening in society itself, in our soul or in our body, for example, because the immune systems of the uh, human organism is the best example of self-organizing systems uh, uh, concerning the human body. So the, com uh, the complexity studies has strong empirical ground and this is the difference between the modern complexity studies and the former speculative natural philosophy. So we, we are going, our approach is not, not only, not as top-down, but bottom-up approach from the, from the uh, investigation of nature itself or a society as an organism, as a certain organism, or our uh, body and mind uh, in a very uh, complicated link, mind-body problem, and then go to some philosophical and methodological consequences. This is exactly the um, meta scientific research level. By establishing complex thinking, 
we are going to the meta scientific meta science level or as Edgar Morin name it it's transdisciplinarity there are some nuances between interdisciplinarity and transdisciplinarity uh, transdisciplinarity is more real collaborations of uh, scientists and uh, specialists who know this very fragment of nature or uh, society, for example. Collaboration of methodologists with uh, cognitive psychologists, with specialists in education. And this is uh, uh, the uh, creation of uh, joint Project is here of very importance for transdisciplinarity of science. Or we can name it after the French philosopher Felix Guattari, transversality, queer thinking, queer thinking and uh, go deeper to the understand it the basis of complex thinking in the nature itself, to understand how nature works, how our body works, how do they think, the patterns of complexity. So uh, we can say that complexity studies is our transdisciplinarity in actions, in action. Uh, the holistic character of complexity studies and complex thinking. Holistic, uh, the complex thinking can be elucidated as a kind of evolutionary thinking. It's, it's connected with evolution. Uh, evolution uh, as uh, we can describe it by using uh, the understanding of evolution of the universe, evolutionary conception of universe, starting from Big Bang, cosmic evolution, the hypothesis of um, Alexander Friedman and Georgi Gamov in 20th century, the uh, biological evolutionary theory, starting from Darwin, but then connected with genetics. So to say, the synthetic theory of evolution in biology. And the third important component, this is exactly the theory of com complex and self-organizing systems. So complex thinking is always an evolutionary thinking. Complex thinking is a holistic thinking because um, uh, the properties of the whole are very important to understand the synergies between the, uh, uh, when we construct, for example, a teamwork, a synergy between different people when a very good teamwork is constructed. Very important. And synergy means that one plus one is more than two. Synergy in family, means that a man and a woman is more than, family is more than each individual in the, in the family. So this is a holistic character. The holistic, holistic properties of well-organized, self-organized self systems. Complex thinking, according to my view, is also non-linear thinking. What do I mean by nonlinear thinking? Nonlinearity is a way to understand the alternatives of evolution, the alternatives of development. There are no one and single path to this destiny, to this end. But all this, there are alternatives of development. And when we construct the 
mathematical models. They are nonlinear models, nonlinear equations. Nonlinear equations have not one, but several solution. And these several solution are math mathematical representation, representations of these alternatives of development of the natural or social systems. But this is not the, uh, this is not the all, because the uh, nonlinear thinking is also presupposition that in development of these, of that complex systems, there are different periods, difference of fast growth, and then the periods of um, uh, slowing down, slowing down. So the fast growth, economic growth, and then recession and slowing down. The fast development of personal career, and then uh, some uh, long holidays, holidays, and go beneath the ways, beneath the ways, and uh, uh, long rest. Uh, also in creative activity, in artistic activity, there are some such cycles. In poetry, in painting, some season, uh, then nothing can be, can be done, no idea. And then uh, some, someday uh, um, um, will happen and a poet will, will, or a dramaturg or a writer will write the whole poem in one night, in one night. These are exactly the, uh, the uh, blow in our regime, explosion of creative activities. And this also uh, non-linearity. Non-linearity is also, the, so to say, nested evolution. What does it mean by nested evolution? Nested evolution is fractal st structure of evolution in space of time, then several periods of time, can be, can, uh, there, when there are some scale invariants and uh, periods uh, of short, uh, for example, um, explosion um, may be, be observed in the lines of general lines of, of the development during the whole years. So there are different senses in this nonlinearity. Nonlinearity to, 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 to know how to think in, in nonlinear way is to learn to think in a complex way. We shall use this complex thinking, such a complex thinking, to deal with the complexity in the world. And uh, inter uh, complex thinking in, is integrative is integrative thinking. So the complex studies can provide us with a strategic vision, vision and a method. An ability to develop a method is peculiar to rather developed scientific theory. The theory of complexity helps us not only to understand how nature works, how society is organized, how our head, heads think, but also how to predict the development and skillfully to manage and to implement the most favorable scenarios of development in nature and society. Method, as Edgar Morin also said, in introduction to his um, opus magnum method is not something given once and for all. It's not at all something frozen uh, forever. It is permanently developing knowledge. With the method, we are always in the process of motion, doing, we are in the process of doing we are process of working. I would like to conclude my speech by citing the brilliant lines of Antonio Machado's poem, Caminanto no hay camino, se hace el camino al andar. 
Thank you for your attention. A nombre de la Unión de Universidades de América Latina y el Caribe y Multiversidad Mundo Real Edgar Morán, le entrego a la doctora Elena Quieneseva el siguiente reconocimiento por esta interesante ponencia que nos acaba de dar. Gracias.